So this is our, our fourth scheduled meeting um, of the calendar year, which is the, I guess, the meeting after the fall migration, winter migration, right? Um, that we're required by town ball the bylaws to have. So welcome, everyone. Um, I'm the Phantom Commissioner. Um, I am here. I do live in town, but I was glad to see you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, this, but this, this past year is probably one of the busiest years I've had at my company in Kent. Awesome. So I just, I just never, I'm here, but I'm everywhere. So I do apologize. Um, I wanted to open the meeting and thank you guys, because you guys have certainly done a yeoman's job this year. Um, I get the emails and I get the text from Billy and we talk, and I know you guys have been in the stream. You've done uh, drone work, you've done clearing. Way, way, way more than, than, than I would expect of, uh, from a volunteer group. I mean, you guys really, really have gone beyond the call, and, uh, and we're seeing that in the amount of fish we've got this year and hopefully next year. Even though we had a little difficulty with water later in the year, I think we got them, I think we got water at the end and probably just feel just yeah, yeah. Time. I think yeah. everybody's yeah. probably gone that's brought them under the dam. Right. So I think everybody's gone that's gone and anybody that stays will just be bigger next year. So right. but I checked, I didn't see like one or two at the dam. So level. I just wanted to make that point that I know you guys are working hard. I know you don't see much of me, but I'm there to write letters of Chair oh, the meeting, so whatever you want me to do or not want me to do. So just as long as that's, I just wanted to clear the air on that because I don't ignore you. I know you're there, and uh, if they would let me leave my office, I would probably come help. But it's like, like I'm on a rough band. You know? um, I did want to, I did want to mention one thing that I don't know if everyone has this, but I'm going to pass it out anyway. It's it's the open meeting laws that everybody seems to be having a. A, a real hard time with lately that you've got to get the rules. Um, I have one copy that I'd be glad to give. Mm -hmm. It explains um, basically how we're supposed to meet, how many people we need to meet, how we have to announce the meetings, how they have to be public, how we can't meet more than so many of us in a, in a private setting and discuss things. So if you could all go to the website, I believe you can probably find it on the uh, mass.gov, I think. It's on, yeah, the, right? it's on the town's website. Oh, it's on the town's, too. If you could just read it. Because the survey was on that, too. I did the survey. Yeah, I, I did had too. two surveys to do, one on yeah. the open meeting law and one on the open meeting law, yeah. whether I thought it was any good or whether I paid attention to it. We could just fill these in, right? Yes, yeah. but, I, just, but just, so, just so that everybody knows, yeah. technically you're supposed to go to the town and look at it. And here's a copy. Anybody can have it. Excuse me, when I was sworn in, I got a copy of that. Okay, I signed some documents. All right, good. Just as long as everybody's right. signed them and got them in. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want me to keep that copy yes. with all the records? Yeah, why don't you do that, yeah. Janice? So then don't have to use if you've done it before. Know. If you've done it before, you're all set. If yeah. you didn't do it, yeah. okay. you have to do it every year. You got to do it every year. Okay. And you also have to do um, the ethics. Oh, yeah, the ethics. Every year. Oh, I know. Or every two years. The ethics might be every two years. We do a course show. Yeah, I did it when I was when I was in the commission. I had many courses on it. So oh, let take all the people from that. Do you remember? Yes. Why don't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you see that he gets that? Yeah. yeah. Well, if somebody could send us reminders to do this, then we could just do a checklist and say, okay. Yeah. Usually, usually I get something, you know, an email from uh, Sabrina. Yeah. And you know, that's CC us. Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah, yeah the she sends reply. You know, Rick Madden completed. Yeah. I completed. Yeah. And we yeah. did it. And we yeah. did the documentation. So just as long as we, we because not that we're a target, but we are a target in certain things. So if we if we have everything up to snot. Right. And, yeah. and the other thing, Janet, was where you come into play is the, the minutes of the meeting yeah. to be posted within. Well, what I uh, I believe legally too. Yes. The minutes have to be approved before they are Post. disseminated to everybody. Right. What I do is after these after our meetings, I always take a copy of it. And I put on my my copy of the minutes. That I put it into the clerk's office because that's mm -hmm. where they hold them. But the problem I've been having, and no one's been giving me an answer of how how I get it on the website. I've asked Sabrina. I asked Casey. Since it's on wall at the library, I could yeah. because she's just, the one that does it. So I'll take table. the minutes if you're approved tonight. I'll take them and yeah. email them over to Deb. I wasn't sure. If she's still doing that, yeah, because I was 
I heard something that was kind of, and Lou was kind of taking it over or something. And no, Lou, the, <laughs> what Lou has done is, is um, he's banging on everybody's door. Okay. Where, where are the minutes? Right, yeah. What's happened is um, there's only a certain percentage of all of the committees and commissions in the town right. that's complying with the town by law. Yeah. Because yeah. they're not being they're not being done on time or they're not being yeah. done period. Yeah, when I did so, my survey I did mention that we only meet four times a year and I have to wait for approval right. of the minutes before I can pass them pass them on. I think and I wrote non applicable I, on a lot of those. Yeah, questions. I did <laughs> and then I made a copy I have a copy of ones I submitted to I printed out a copy just so we'll have it for our record yeah. so the copy said it well, was. Well one never thing done. that really helped was um, a lot of people were turning in their minutes to the town clerk. Yeah. That's but they weren't turning him in to right. that wall yeah. to be posted on the town website. Yeah, so they were actually posted, Yeah. but they were posted with the town clerk. Yeah, that's what, I, had, that's just, what I was expecting <coughs> in the beginning to do, give them to the town clerk, yeah. and that's what I did. Yeah, so, yeah, so if you could just email me. I'll, I'll email them over to Jeff tomorrow. Are we allowed to approve them minutes like yes. independently? Can, we, can you send it to us next week? Can we read it at home and, and approve it or disapprove it? I don't know how we want to No, do I think that. you have to do it at a meeting. Yeah, meeting. That's how we always. Well, no, it's not at a meeting. Because then if there's any discussion, it's right. a regular meeting. Yeah, it has to be done at a regular meeting. Anything. Right. So if anybody, I mean, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had for opening remarks. Um, I guess we'll know how the herring did in the spring. They seem to have been a lot. Millions of going over three years ago, what happened? Yes. Well, we'll know three years from now what happened, but it's yeah. all, it's, an, it's an ongoing thing. But hopefully, we'll have as good of next year as we. Well, can. at least they have us looking up for it. Yes, we do. And guys, we, do. Uh, we did everything we could to get them. To I've lost up. all my clout. I'm no longer on the commission. Uh, the Governor Welch seems. I mean, Governor Welch. I like that one. Well, they don't like Governor Baker. <laughs> that's a long time. The Governor Baker <laughs> seems. So, well, that's when I started with Governor Welch. So he seems He's to. Uh, have thoughts that, that the nine of us were not qualified to do our job, although between us I think it was probably 200 years of, of um, experience managing Massachusetts fisheries. But anyway, he, he, he approved, you know, appointed nine other people and they're doing whatever they do. I still have a little bit of clout, but at least we got the counter out of them. We still have Brad's phone number. And um, Brad is very interested in, in herring, so that's going to help too. So we should be all right. Not as good as we were. Well, I think we can. We've learned a lot, and I yes. think we can carry, a, you know, that torch. If not financially, but I think we know yeah. what we need to do better than we ever did. All okay. right. So, having said that, I would like to have a motion to approve um, September 16th minutes. If there's any changes, omissions, or additions, mistakes, uh, now's the time to. Air them out. If there are none, I would entertain a motion to accept as written and we'll get them to change. Janet and she can get them to where they have to go. So we second that motion. Well, somebody's going to make it for us. I don't know what to do. I'll make it to accept the minutes. Uh, Rick, second, second anyone? Wait, so. All in favor? Aye. All right, so they're okay. All right, Janet, you mm -hmm. can sure. send them along their way. Yeah. Um, do you want me to do past minutes too? Do you want me to bother to do the past minutes? If you have them, if yeah. they've been approved, oh, you might as well yeah, I'll just have them. send her what she has. Thank you, Governor. I'm going to do everything. <laughs> Documentation. Important. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll just skip down to number two just for a minute. Um, Bill has got a new logbook, so that's that's done. Um, you want to discuss? I didn't go on the herring visit, but you guys did. I looked at your pictures, Arthur. They were pretty, pretty good. Yeah, I can tell you about it. Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, yeah was no, nice. go ahead. Yeah, it was nice. It was the four of us went, and we met Phil over there at um, East Weymouth, the, um, the restaurant there, Nico's. We met in the parking lot. They have a beautiful um, structure. They well, it's a concrete structure built back in uh, the seventies. That the herring come through. They have about a mile run from from Whitman Pond um, to the uh, estuary and to the ocean. So compared to ours, which is like 13 miles long. So we, you know, Phil's familiar with ours, and we went over to familiarize ourselves with his. And he, we did a walking tour from the park up to um, some pretty cool little villages and old structures so that we know different kinds of electrical you know, plant. plants and that kind of thing, yeah. It's pretty cool. And up at that point, it's all granite, and that, that's, you know, more like hundreds of years old or whatever. But it looks in good shape, and it's a vibrant uh, waterway. And they get, I think, maybe maybe twice as many, um, 
Well, we've been averaging around 400,000. 400? What was our car last year? No, two something. It was like 268. And then it was a mistake, so it might even have been higher. Yeah, it was higher. Just well, you know what was happening? Big run. To get off the subject, the, the, the fish were headed out at the same time they were Some coming up. So, you know, if you leave the, scre the screen there, they're going to they're gonna die there. So we had to remove it. So, so we had 200 plus anyway. Yeah, but, yeah so that happened with that. But, yeah, but it was a good day. We had a nice day. We spent about a half day. It was a beautiful November day. And uh, and uh, we did the nice walk, and we learned a lot. And it's a beautiful place. We, had, we ended up at the uh, actual visitor lot there. What's the name of the little? Whitman's Pond? No, yeah. no. where we ended up at the end of the outlook there where you fish on the estuary. Oh, okay. Yeah, with that? Uh, it's called the Durante property. Durante? Durante? Like yeah. Jimmy Durante? Yeah. <laughs> do you have smelt in that run too? But we do. We have, used to have a real good smelt run in the book up to the first ladder. Mm -hmm. And lately not so good. You have eels too, right? Yes, we do. You have an eel left there? Uh, no, they no. run the lattice. Oh, okay. They well, get up pretty much anything. Huh? The adults can. Uh, we're not so sure about the uh, the young of the year, the alvies. We're not sure, so sure how they get there, but I'm sure they are getting there. No, they they're just, be okay. they're just yeah. tough to see. Yeah. You know? Yeah, or invisible. All right, good. Um, yeah, it was a good day. Good, thanks. Glad. Thank you for yeah, thank you. hosting it. It was nice. Oh, we'll yeah, do that again. Yeah. Um, <coughs> He treated us to a very nice dinner afterwards. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, very, was very educational. With no budget, right? You don't have a budget. No man. budget. Yeah. <laughs> no. And, uh, it's amazing to let you take care of it. She'll no, no. Yeah. It. I was my, my treat, and I was glad to do it. Good. Thank you. Good burgers. Um, I know, while you're on, if you're talking about that, I gave you some information on that GIS. Yes. Yeah. Um, I talked to uh, Kathy Salmon, who was on the Assessor. And uh, she looked into it for me. She actually called Weymouth. Um, some people down in Weymouth about it. Um, they said that they didn't think that it was through a grant. I thought a lot of that might have been through a grant, the GIS. What are we speaking of now? The GIS. You know, the well, monitoring uh, equipment that you have in the pools. Now, that's all, that's all federal. That's all. USGS. USGS. Right. Mm. Yeah, they, well, they, they call it G G I S. Yeah. Probably short, but love U.S. G S. Then it's U.S. Uh, United States Geological uh, Survey. Yeah. Survey. Yeah. Yeah. It helps with devices that uh, can float in the water that collect all kinds of information like that, and they're not that expensive. There's one at the at the uh, uh, Silver uh, Lake. There's a series of them in Silver Lake. Yeah, there's one at Indian Head, I believe. Okay. Right at the bridge there. Absolutely. Right? Elm Street. I'm in Silver Lake. Really? I think there's one there. There's yes. a, I know there's a meter there. There's another one right at the end of West Elm Street at the uh, Ford Bridge, right down on the right. There's that's a solar that's panel. That's, that's what I'm talking about. They put that in when I was a kid. I was like, I think it was 1964. They put that in. Army Corps engineers came in. And yeah, that's, that's and it just it, it the, does the temperature and the reads how much water goes by. Yeah, there's a box there or something. Yeah. I think yeah. it's a it's a there's meter. A, yeah, there's a meter right down yeah. in the water. There's a little. It pulls air through and tells it how much water is going by and stuff. I think there's a new generation of things that are much smaller and yeah. you can just float it yeah. and the By the way, she checked with, um, with grants and um, all that stuff and said that um, they thought that it, that it wasn't through um, any kind of a grant system and it didn't do with the state or the, because uh, the um, assessors pretty much run that GIS here yeah. in town. But, uh, so we're going to do some more checking. I got a hold of Ed Thorne, Ed Thorne coming up to see uh, if he can talk to um, some people about it. Maybe if you go find one, where there's a number, of, an 800 number or something on it. He actually did. Yeah. Hey, hey. He actually yeah. took a number. Uh, phone number off it? So a phone number off of that when we're done. I just got to find my notes for that day. There we go. So many notes. So. Um, would it be possible where we're entering into an educational um, form with the schools now that there would maybe be educational grants? I don't think you need a grant for that. If it's USGS, that's just something the government does. They will do it? Yeah, I mean, if they want to do it, I think they need a reason to do it, but it's not, I wouldn't think it would be a grant thing, because that's something they monitor water. Yes. So that would be more of just asking them if they would, if they, if they would do it or if it was necessary and that would be really see what happens. I mean, that's, that's why that phone number bill would be. Well, 
that probably yeah, goes they, to them. They took it off from one of the one of the things that was down there. The fellow you want to talk to is Roy Sokolow. Roy Sokolow? Sokolow. Is he with the feds? Or? Yeah, he's the guy that installed it. Actually, he was in charge of installing them in this particular area of the yeah. northeast. Is yeah. he from Weymouth? Or? No, he's not from Weymouth. I don't know where he's from, but I've emailed him before. Could if you, you email us his email? What's that? Could you send us his email? Sure. That would, yeah, that would give us a starting point. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, all right, Bill has seemed to um, get a bunch of things to make the trailer better. He's got hangers and hooks and everything. Yeah. And, um, that's an easy one. Yeah, so he's going to, that's all we are. We, he picked it up today, so we have that. Awesome. Um, you know, Bill and I discussed today we need some more safety equipment. Bill's going to pick up a couple of um, hard hats with the with the shields on them for the cutter. Because we're using the chainsaws or the overhead okay. cutter. We got some earmuffs and some nice. some hooks and hangers and because we have about um, we have about a thousand dollars left, right, Bill? You spent yeah. it, so we got about a thousand left. And yeah, we'll probably pick up some more waders. Yeah, yeah, you get punctured pretty yeah. easily out there. Yeah, and people are coming out all the time with wet feet. I'm fine. I've got a great. I feel bad actually. They yeah, you've got like dry the best pair going. Yeah, yeah, they, they work. Yeah, but great. they take like a half hour to get on. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you know, she tried to get them off. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to hear. I don't want to see that. Really. <laughs> he, he You've already them. seen it it's actually, been out there. He doesn't put them on unless he absolutely has to. Right. You know, this time of year. So just so yeah. everybody knows, they'll. I don't know. We'll, Get the trail organized. I don't think we need any more chainsaws or anything. I don't know. It'd be nice if we could pull it in somewhere and do that instead of doing it outside and doing it. Well, we can pull it in my shop anytime. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Let you know, know you have the shop on a Saturday and just pull it right yeah. in. <laughs> do whatever you want. We'll just bring out better, you know, Akitas and stuff. Just go there and do it. I'm going over the saws. I got the small one running like a charm and I sharpened up the uh, chains and oiled them all up. But the larger one that took a dip. Well, anything. Just run it over the mortgage. Oh, no. I mean, if I can do it, I do it. I've been doing it. Well, it just sharpen the chains. You don't want to have them sharpen chains. No, no. But I mean, as far as maintenance on them goes, oh, yeah. they won't start. I mean, so oh, bring them to the off and just clean that's out the clutch and stuff. Oh, that's good. But no, that's there's, good there's one of them that I've, I've cleaned the plug on. I'm just going to try a new plug. All right. Well, I just tomorrow. drop it off, Rick and Lincoln. Okay. So where? We have it over oh. Morgan's in Halifax. On 20, on uh, 106. More, okay, yes. Just beyond the before uh, Stella's the Stella Pol Polaris. Yeah, <laughs> that's a joke. Stella's is gone. It's gone. It's yeah, it used to be. It's now still it's still there. Gone. No, it's still there. Um, so anything, and I don't know if there's any more power equipment you guys think you need. Um, if well, we don't spend this thousand ATV. Well, we know we're, we're going to go for that. <laughs> when I go to the budget. No, I'm not sure. No, oh, yeah. Okay, good. No, really. If we could buy one for a thousand bucks, I'd buy it. But we can't. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You know what? It's even better is the. Uh, the, the Four seasons they have now. Oh, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, the yeah. ones that have Marshall Fair, $25,000, $30,000. They even make a nice electric one now, too. Yeah. All right, right so we'll... we'll um, okay, dreamless Christmas is over. <laughs> we'll figure out how to spend the money, because we got we can't... If we don't spend it, we lose it. Which is yeah. silly, but that's the way government works. Well, yeah. it's so a way to go. All right. Um, I'm going to skip the next one for a minute. Schedule areas. You know, I guess I'll go back to that one. Well, the fish kill. Um, you guys were involved. I was involved a little bit. But you guys were there. You saw it. We not pointing any fingers at anybody, but we might have violated a few people's rights or property rights or whatever. But um, it was investigated by the EPOs. Uh, Brad Chase is aware of it. He wrote a report on it. The bog owner is certainly well aware of <laughs> what he did or didn't do. And I think the speculation on whether he did what he did intentionally, or it was an accident, or a combination of both, and something we'll probably never know. But we will watch him next year closely. The EPOs are aware he's got a, I guess, a mark against him. So if it happens again, it'll be more than just a visit and a warn. I guess that's the best way to put it. I know that Bill said there was. He counted a ton of dead fish. Mm -hmm. I went there and they were gone. I don't yeah. know where they, they went. But they showed up again. Well, 
and that and it's it is what it is. It's nothing well, we, yeah, no, we no. can do about it. No, um, we knew that. We're not prevent, prevent, yeah, prevention. Yeah, prevention is the main. So I think next year we have to be, um, especially when we're in a low water condition again. Yes. We really have to be. Well, it was so late this year. That's right. why it ended up in the fog because usually it pumps up when the when the fish are there. Well, there's right. enough water where they don't. There's exactly. Not if there's enough water, it doesn't. Right. Bother. Excuse me for a minute, Phil. When did the fish leave the Weymouth Rock? What, what time did you get which, which uh, We usually have fish right up to November. Yeah. This this year, this year, huh? this year, the last fish I saw was October third, yeah, and I think that had a lot to do with the drought. Yeah, they left early. See, they didn't they have the water to get out on October 3rd, yeah. But yeah. speaking of, of right. pumps, we used to have a pump problem in the South Cove Women's Pond, too, because that's where we divert water up to Great Pond. And they solved that problem by putting a screen on at the end of the pump. This, this, and Brad this Chase screen. is well aware of the screen that we have on South Yeah, Cove. well, this, Brad has sent, I think in his letter, uh, his report, there was a design for a screen for that. That uh, should uh, never happen again with a screen. Yeah, sorry. Um, this is a, a very, very small. There's a with, screen on the. Oh, sorry. With regular water conditions, it's actually one of the better systems I've seen. It's a double fencing system. Okay. It just they they pulled water underneath it or water saw at its own level, and it just undermined and went under the structures. If they, okay. If they, I mean, they, it's really amazing what they did do to try to do the right thing at one point. You know what I'm saying? It's not just a screen. It's a big walk around, double screens with big drops. You know, it's. They really did try to do the job. I want to give them credit, but they tried to do it. Well, yeah, and I think I think okay. the low water is what the low water was the was caused the problem here, the problem this year. But you know, no, they're, we, they're not there. They no, didn't work well with us. Right, they should have worked with us. You know, to protect the cranberries, he needs to flood it. Was there right. no, I, was there any yes. reason for him to flood the bog at that time? Harvest. He's been okay. waiting for water. There was no water. Yeah, yeah. he waited till the last. Because I was up there today, and his bog's not flooded. I figured with the cold weather coming, he would have flooded his bog today. Um, no, to pick them, they wet pick them, so they have to. Don't flood they them. flood them to okay. protect the bogs too from freezing? Yeah, the in the winter, but they yeah. actually need the water first to pick the berries. Right. And they have to pick them before the frost. Okay. Or spray anyway. So I think a lot of times they just use sprinklers when it's yeah, when the it, frost. Oh, okay. They don't. Really, they don't right. have to freeze them like they do an right. orange tree. Yeah, yeah, they just. Yeah. They just exactly. Didn't you see fish down below after the, it was empty? Oh, a lot of fish, fish were killed. Yeah, question. down below the dam. Yeah. A lot of question about no fish killed. But anyway, it's it's. It well, was, you know, bad I, I didn't, excuse me, but I didn't take many photos. I'm not a big fan of taking right. photos of big fish, but I witnessed it, and I and I did take photos, and there were lots, lots of, of fish, them, lots of them, and it was it was very hard to watch. Well, I think just in the future, well, just yeah. for everybody's sake, I talked to the owner yeah. after a while, and he was livid when I talked to him, and I didn't. I'm surprised he took my call. Livid at what? At you? Well, ang well, he was angry that the way it was. I don't know how you explain it, but <laughs> the drone. The people on his property. Um, well, he has a problem with where he thinks his property may be. Well, also. it could be. I, I, I'm not going to argue with him. I was right here. I'm just saying. I'm not against the Well, next year we'll be different. Right. I'm just can saying. I just, yeah. can, I, can I make a recommendation here? Yes. Yeah. Five people talking. Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. I, I have a motion to approve. And everybody should be going through the chair, not not just okay. talking, 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 and jumping in after somebody else. All right. I have a chairman here that runs the the committee meeting and everything should go through the chairman and when he authorizes you to say something then then you should say something and you should say whatever you want to say but trying to sit over here and listen to all the stuff that's going on it's just ridiculous it really is and Thank you being know. photographed it's going to the people in the town are going to see this um, it should be done the right way you should go through the chair thank it's you just, just Thank you. all right so I think the fish kill was a it was a lesson for all of us, and I think in a lot of ways a lesson on how to handle and not handle a property owner because these guys have to be our friends um, in the future. And I'd, I'd like to say something. Go ahead, go. When, when you, uh, No, go ahead. You you were involved as more than I was. I I did a report, and, um, and I, I want to submit the report to you as. Um, being involved in the incident that we had. And um, I've gone over the whole thing. And basically, um, what I want to say is that um, we observed a fish kill, and I'm not going to mention any names or property because they have a right to be here if we're going to be talking about them. Um, but um, the owner wasn't there. Uh, the, actually, the owner was there. Um, it was the owner's son. It wasn't there, 
that we assumed was the owner. Um, but as soon as um, I talked to him and said that there was a problem, he said he gave me permission immediately to go on his property and shut the pump down. So we did that. Um, he indicated that this was the second time that it had happened in, in, this, in this particular season. Um, we went down and we put a, a big net all the way around his property um, and, and, uh, and tried to stop anything further from happening. We cleaned out all the juveniles that were inside of both of the screens and put them on the outside. Um, I asked him not to pump again unless he was going to advise us about it. Um, he did call me and say he was going to start a smaller pump and run the small pump. And I said, okay, I'll we'll be able to check it. And we did. And it was working perfectly. It was, everything was fine about it. But sometime between the time I talked to him and the next day, the small pump went down and turned the bigger one back on again. And that's where the problem arose again. And that's when there was more fish being pumped in there. So um, I know that some of the guys took pictures. I also took some pictures there. Um, and, and people don't like that when you're going around their property taking pictures or whatever, especially if they think that you're going to use it for criminal purposes. Our point wasn't for criminal purposes. Our point was to document what took place and what happened so that people could see. It wasn't like we were um, trying to avenge something or run over there and take as many pictures as we can so we could bring them to court and, you know, and have those, uh, license taken away or sue them or whatever else. It, the purpose was to document what took place. It would be no different than um, the police responding to a motor vehicle accident and seeing the cars all smashed up. They, they go and they take pictures to document what took place and what happened. And I think that's the only purpose that any of the people here tried to do was to take a picture for um, documentation purposes. That, that was it. Um, I was I was very upset with the with the way that um, the environmental police handled it by coming down and uh, not even completing their investigation and automatically giving the guy a verbal warning. Um, I guess that's their procedure. I just didn't. I thought that something along the lines were. Um, if the person was contacted and sat down with, with uh, Brad Chase and agreed to a process and agreed to and signed a document indicating that he would take care of this thing in the future, then that's where it would end. And I didn't have a problem with that. Um, but unfortunately, um, that didn't happen. Although the, uh, the owner's son did have a conversation with Brad Chase and indicated that he would um, work with Brad Chase and come up with a solution so that this didn't happen again in the future. So, so it might not have happened exactly the way we wanted it to happen, but at least it happened that way. Um, and I know that the guy was mad. Um, I called him personally and talked to him. Um, I've been a friend of the family there for a long time. and. Uh, He's indicated that he would be willing to sit down and talk to talk to me and uh, anybody else on the on the board, to, so that we could work together in the future. Because it's something that we need to know. If if he's going to be pumping his blog a telephone call to any one of the members that are on the commission, could say, "Listen, the heron are really thick right now. You know, can you wait a week or something?" So. That might help him to make a determination not to turn that big huge pump on so that it's going to suck the stuff up through the mud. So I don't think it was just the low water. I think that was a part of it, but he knows that that has to be fixed, even if there is low water next year. That there's another um, uh, engineer's plan that Brad is giving him. Which I would like to get a copy of so that we have that on record here that he's abiding by what uh, Brad Chase from the Division of Marine Fisheries says that's going to make it safer, that, that it's going to be further out in the water so that the 
fish wouldn't have any access at all to get any idea the regular screens, which, which is really going to help. And that's what we want to do. We want to correct that problem. But um, I do have a report. I want to pass it in um, to you exactly the dates and we went to dates and times of everything that we did. Okay. Did. All right. Janet, you want to put this into the? Mm -hmm. Should we post this bill? Um, I think it has to be um, redacted. The names yeah. and stuff like I that have to be taken out of it. See, I don't. I think what I've mentioned in my notes here is sufficient. I don't believe you okay. need to. As long as it's in the minutes. This. They'll submit it every Yeah, that's there. what I'm just writing now. Right, and I'll just keep this out. in, I'll yeah. staple this with these meetings. Yeah, I'll yeah. also yeah. submit a copy of that to the selection's office so that they have it. Okay. Um, in case anything other comes up in the future. Okay. So that um, they have a copy of it. Okay. And then if anybody wants a copy of that you letter, can. the report, then they can get it, probably get it through the selection's office and they'll redact anything, any yeah. names or anything else that just Should added. I make copies for the commission? Uh, yeah. Bill, thank you. I know you you put a lot of effort into the report and into the to the incident because I know we talked a lot in it. Hopefully, uh, but, but the lesson I took away from the whole thing is it, it was an unfortunate incident. But I think we have to be more careful of how we treat the landowners and how we approach them because I talked to this guy and he thought, like you said, that the pictures and, the, and everything was was somehow going to be used against him. And I tried to explain to him that any fish kill in the state has to be reported, and every fish kill, whether it's in a, a herring run or a pond, or is investigated by the EPOs, and it's just it's just part of a record. That it's, just, it's just an ongoing record that, that, that the EPOs and the division keeps. It's not, it wasn't for any criminal purposes, like you said. We're not out to get the guy. We just want to correct the problem. I believe Brad sent him a letter, and I thought I saw a copy to me. I'll look again. That um, it did have a plan for a new screen, a new screen setup in there. So I'll look into that, and if I can't find it, I'll ask Brad to to send it again, and I'll make sure that it gets to everybody. Um, but it's you know it's proverbial water over the dam. It's done. Yeah, you, know, you, you know I think what the tough part about it is, Mike, is that. Especially the guys that are here that are, that are in the room and said, um, for the last three or four years or whatever, we've worked really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, breaking your tail in the woods and cleaning stuff and swamps and all this other stuff. Um, and then we finally get a, a big pile of fish that come up and we're all happy as a clam about the whole thing about all these fish coming up. And then all of a sudden, it's like you see thousands it's, it's, of fish coming out of them. I agree. Pump. It's you know, it's uh, it's disheartening. Yeah, that's what it is. is. I agree 100 percent. And and like I said I I said right from the start. I I don't think it was an intentional action. It was intentional that he pumped the water, but I don't think he intended to kill the fish. But that's what happened. Yeah. And, and I realize that all the effort everybody put in, and then to see them laying all over the place on a bog on the side of the pond and just at the bottom. You know, it is disheartening, and, it, and it, I, I understand fully that it, it, it makes you want to do something. <clears throat> makes you want to do something. I won't say what the something is. It just makes you want to do something about it. Yes, sir. Uh, it makes me want to be proactive, I think, through this whole thing. I just want to be taken in the wrong way. I've known Cranberry Bog Growers my whole life, um, and I've watched it. Um, and I have no hard feelings for any of this other than to be proactive, we have nets. We'll come right in and be proactive. We're the guys you can call. If you can't do it yourself, we'll help. Mm -hmm. And I want that note. We will respond and help with our best ability and a good attitude to help any situation to help the fish. Well, I'm glad we only have one bog on our, <laughs> on our run. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One's enough. Is there always been one? Oh, I think there's only uh, two bogs in town now that are operating all the way up to the yeah, then let them go. Well, all right. Well, that's good. It's done. It's over, and uh, we'll be we'll be very aware of it next year, Rick. I'm sure you'll be there to monitor it from afar, like from the road, well, <laughs> or a drone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right. Um, next year, Bill had suggested that maybe in the spring, 
we try to get some more involvement in the spring in the uh, the cleaning of the, the you know the uh, the river and the monitoring and just a lot more eyes watching everything. So in the spring meeting, um, he suggested we invite the Pembroke Watershed and and North River Watershed Association, which I'm fine with the Pembroke water, uh, Watershed because they're here in town. I'm not against the North River Watershed, but I think they have a different agenda than, you know, they're more, I don't know how concerned they are with herring. I'm sure they're concerned with herring. I don't want to send the wrong message, but the Pembroke Watershed are people in town, and I think they would be a, an asset if they would, if they would, uh, you know, try to get some involvement with them. So I think in the spring, Janet, before our spring meeting, if you want to make a note that when we, when we decide when it's going to be, we should send a letter to both those organizations and just tell them we're going to have a meeting and they'd be invited just to come and, and listen and, or send a representative and see if we can't get some volunteers or something to help. Get and like yeah. Okay. Do, do I, yeah, we can get that for you. Okay. And um, let's see. Before we get the future project, I have a question on the 300,000 gallons of water all year. Do you mean that's what you need going over the dam? Through the ladder. Through the ladder. That's what's, uh, that's the what's in the, um, when it says the diversion of water there, um, in the regular general law that was passed. Right. Um, it says that while they're diverting water, uh, I'm pretty sure that's exactly the way that it says while they're diverting water, um, has to be at least 300,000 gallons. Do we have a mark on the dam that tells us where that is? Uh, no. It's, 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 um, it's on their gauge, isn't it? They, they have um, a black line on a pipe. Right, the data thing, thing, right? You know, that they look at and say, okay, from here to there, we can draw water and all that. That's why I kind of thought that it was very important that if we had our own equipment that at the sense of town hall or whatever to say we're at 65 or we're at 68 or wherever we are. Mm -hmm. The thing that I would like to address with with, um, with them and with um, Brock and Mayor or whatever is the fact that um, they're allowed to, although they've been working with us very well, they've been allowed to um, divert water during migration periods. I think originally when that law was made 18 years ago, there was probably so many heron that people really didn't care that much about it. But where we're trying to bring the heron back, it's not a good idea to be diverting, well, uh, it, at least on the juvenile fish going back down mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. One, because they haven't fixed this screen. They've been advised by the Division of Marine Fisheries on a number of occasions to have sent them letters and told them that that it was, was broken. We've been down there a number of times and seen it and called them and told them and asked them if they would shut the water down because there was juveniles going into that pipe and getting diverted to Silver Lake. So they're, they're well aware of it, but they're not fixing it. They're not doing anything to maintain it. And uh, last year, the guys got together and took their own money out of their pocket and went out and bought a net, a saying net or whatever, quick and, of it. and stretched it across the brook that goes down to that way so that the juvenile wouldn't get in there. And it's some, something that our own guys shouldn't have to do. That should be something that Brockton should be doing or be enforced by the Division of Marine Fisheries to say it's, it's, you might as well say it's fish kill because if they go into the Civil Lake, they're not coming out of there. That's right. And it's uh, fish food to some of the other fish in Civil Lake that are, that are bigger. So, um, but in order to maintain all of our streams, they think that it's very important that we have 300,000 300, gallons of water going down right. there. Per day, so all year long? Yes. Per day. Per. Yes, the minimum amount. So that keeps the stream so that there's so water in less than that. By, by them dropping the level of the water down so low, you, we don't get that 300,000 gallons over there. So it's, it's um, however that needs to be engineered, you know, I, I don't know, but the state, I think, needs to help us on this because, um, you know, this is something that I don't know how to measure the water. <laughs> Come on over the well, where to start yeah, from? Yeah. Well, where to start you know, from? Why don't I see if I can get a meeting with Brad Chase? 
know? I think he'd be the one to start. And then, because I know he's he's been to the Brockton Water Commission meeting a number of times, and he brings it up every time. Or he's on the agenda, but they never get to him. So mm -hmm. he's had that both times where he's he you know said I'm on the agenda, and then he goes and the meeting ends before they get to him on the agenda. But they are well aware of it, Creedon, and uh, I don't know if the mayor's aware of it, but I know Creedon is. Yes. <coughs> so I think I'll start with a, an email to Brad Chase and see if I can get him to meet, uh, maybe with you and me, Bill, just to see what, what steps we can take and what steps he's taken, if any, in the, in the last six or eight months, because I haven't talked to him uh, about that in, in probably a year. Uh -huh. I, I think if we haven't done that dil diligent do of these guys going out there and doing what they did, we would have lost a lot more fish this oh. year. Um, you know, because, um, and, and again, I like to say that every time we pick up the phone and we call and say, listen, we got a problem, you need to shut it down because we're watching the juveniles go through this gate. Um, they've done that. They do. I think they've cooperated. Yeah, they've, they've cooperated. As far as that goes. Better. But I think they do have to do maintenance on their, right. their building and that, that whole area. Yeah, this just should be a better way of, of um, doing however they're diverting. Uh, this should, should be a better yeah, way. Yeah, could I say something? Sure. Um, you know, if we're not there to see them being sucked into the diverting pipe, then, you know, that's the thing. You know, if we're not there, we miss two days. That's two days worth of dead fish, you know. So that's where it's extremely important, you know, because we all can't be there all the time, you know. So. All right, no, you're right. All um, right, let me, uh, also, and he says in two days, <coughs> as we know, when fish are migrating, and you can, you know this, you get waves, and if it sucks in a whole wave, that, that could be a large proportion of your fish could happen in two, three, four hours, the way they move. It couldn't, it doesn't take long, so. How about the Monitoring is not, we need a fix, not a monitor. Is the, um, the Jones River goes into Silver Lake, right? Yes. So it used to be. Huh? It used to be. Well, that's what I mean. If he ever yeah. gets, yeah. If they they get the passage, if he ever gets the passage, this, I know Brad's been working on that. Yep. At least if they get sucked in, they'll have an outlet. As long right. as the water doesn't even connect to the river now, because it's so low in Silver Lake. We can right. restock. <coughs> we can actually help restock. All right, well, I'll, <clears throat> I'll check with Brad on that and um, see where, where, what he suggests we do, because if it comes from Brad and us and it goes to them, maybe they'll do something, maybe they won't. It's just, I guess cities, cities and towns just don't have a lot of extra money for herring, which is, I guess it's not good when you're... You know, the other thing I could, I could add into that is that the meetings that I've gone to with uh, Brock and Water, um, on the uh, Central Columbia County Water District mm -hmm. meetings and all that, which a few of us are them, but I'm back to the commissioner on that, um, on that advisory board that, that points these guys, these commissioners that are supposed to be in charge of Brockton. And they've been trying to flex their muscles to get Brockton to do things that they want to, you know, want done, and they're not doing it. It's, it's just another, another right. group of these could committees or whatever that the tail's wagging the dog instead of you know right, so desalinization plant they're supposed to right well, and they had that going in the summer and because and, um, they had to yeah sit because it wasn't dying you want to come in there but it's you know it's just um, they, they need to come up I mean the uh, state reps and the uh, senators and all that they're all well aware that they've been to several of the meetings that I've been to so they know what's going on with it um, Calter, I guess it is, uh, Kingston has, has said that you know, they're going to work with us and change things or whatever, because if they don't, then he's going to file a bill in the legislature to do away with it. So um, he's pretty serious about it. So um, you know, I just I just think that uh, 